we have the theory of cost or the cost function. What is cost? You know that um, in the process of production, costs are incurred. So cost has to do with the payment, the factors of production, which are used in the production of goods and services. And we have about five types of cost. In the cost concept and context, we have the uh, total cost, which has to do with the sum total of all the costs incurred. We have the variable cost, that is cost um, that changes and varies, it varies directly with the level of output. For example, example of um, fixed and variable cost is um, labor. You can decide to increase your labor. The more labor you have, the more product you have, or the more output you have, and the less, so, something like that. Then you have your fixed cost, which is uh, cost that remains unchanged. So for your total cost, we have two ways in getting your total cost. Either you you find the sum of the variable and the fixed cost, or you divide your average cost by, you multiply your average cost by your quantity, quantity of output. Then for the variable cost, you subtract your fixed cost from your total cost. Then for the fixed cost, you have the subtraction of variable cost from your total cost, or you multiply the average fixed cost by quantity. So when we move forward, we talk about the average fixed cost. So um, average cost can be subdivided into two. Average cost has to do with the unit of commodity produced unit, that is the cost incurred per one unit, each unit of a commodity that is consumed, which can be derived by either dividing your total cost by the quantity of or the amount of output, or you add your average fixed cost by your average variable cost. Now, average variable cost is the cost per unit of variable cost. That is the cost you incur in producing or uh, in uh, um, employing variable, um, any variable factor, variable factor like labor and so on. And you can get your average fixed cost by dividing the total variable cost by quantity, or you subtract average variable cost from average total cost. Average total cost is the same thing as your average cost. Then you have your average fixed cost, which is the cost, the fixed cost of producing a unit. Of output, which is gotten by um, either you divide your total fixed cost by quantity or you subtract your average value cost from the average total cost. Then you have your MC, which is marginal cost, which is uh, the cost incurred in producing an extra, an addition, an additional unit of output, which is a uh, formula is change in total cost divided by change in quantity of output. So here you have um, your 2021. If the fixed cost of um, the fixed cost for a firm is 40, why the variable cost per unit is 2? Which of the following equations can represent the cost function for the firm? So you have A as 42Q, you have B as 2Q minus 40, you have C as 2Q plus 40, and you have D as 2Q. So we know that cost function is made up of the total cost. And how do you get your total cost? You add your variable cost with your fixed cost, or you divide your average total, your average cost by your quantity of output. But in this context, in this question, we are given variable cost and we are given fixed cost. So using the formula, FC is given as 40, and variable cost per one per unit is given as two. So we represent the quantity by two and we decide to multiply the quantity by 2 to get the value for our variable cost. Okay, so when you multiply Q, that is the quantity by 2, you have your 2Q, then which will stand for your variable cost, then you add the value, which is 2Q plus 40, to get your cost function. And the appropriate um, answer for this question is the option C, which is 2Q plus 40. So here in 2021, you have given C, equals 100 plus 3Q. What is the fixed cost? A, unavailable, B, 100, C, 3, D, 3Q. So you recall that FC is a cost that does not relate to quantity. So look at it. This is a cost that does not relate to quantity. It's fixed. Example of your fixed cost is uh, machinery and building, uh, payment of salary, and so on. It's, it doesn't, it's a cost that you um, incur continuously, yes? So, um, 
Recall that F, um, FC is the cause that does not relate to quantity, and the expenses that remains unchanged, whatever the level of output. So we are given the level of output as 3Q. So now, since Q is 0, we are not given the value for Q. C is 100, then FC will be 100. Why? Because here, it's constant. It's not changing. So that will automatically be your fixed cost. And the appropriate answer will be the option B. Is 100. A year in year 2021. Yeah, what is the total value, total variable cost at 100 level of output? We know that here, the, we know our first cost is 100 here. So, what do we do? How do we get our variable cost? So, what we do is now, record our variable cost the expense that varies or changes directly with the level of quantity. Alright, so the level of quantity we've given is 3q. So what we do is we multiply this 3q by this to get our um, fixed cost, our variable cost. So 3 times fixed cost will give you your um, 300, which is your option A. Given a, a consumption function C equals 10, Minus, minus 0.6 y. Determine the value of cost if y is 20. So what we need to do is just substitute the value of y in the equation, which is 20, which I did here. So 0.6 times 20 will give you 12. 10 plus 12 will give you 22. The appropriate answer for this question is the option B. In 2016, the additional cost incurred by producing additional units of an output is known as I told you when we are defining the concept, we told you fixed cost has to do with cost that remains that remains unchanged no matter the level of output. Total cost has to do with the total cost incurred on uh, in the process of production on the factors of production. Average cost has to do with the cost per unit of output, and marginal has to do with the additional, the extra cost incurred in producing one more unit of a commodity. So the appropriate answer is the option D. So, which is uh, marginal cost. So, marginal cost is the additional cost that is incurred by producing additional units of an output. Alright, so here's a question for 2015. We have your output from 0 to 4. We have your fixed cost as 100 or 2. And we have your variable cost. And um, if you notice uh, from the table, they ask us to find the value of x, the value of this x. You notice that um, it is at um, output 3 that um, we are trying to find the value for um, variable cost at um, quantity output 3. So we call that VC is the expected that varies or changes directly with the level of output. And this is your VC equals TC minus FC. So X equals VC substitute quantity 3. So at least this is a quantity 3. Okay? So, what we do is we subtract FC, we subtract FC3 from TC3. So FC3 is 100, um, TC3 is 300. And you know that VC is, the, is gotten from by subtracting your fixed cost from your total cost. So we subtract this 100 from this 300 to get the value for X. So which was done here 300 from 100. And you have your 200. So, and your, from the question, the appropriate answer is the option D, which is 200. Then you have um, 2014. Given that FC is 500, VC is 1500, and quantity is 50 units, find the average cost of the product. How do we get that? I told you, average cost is the cost per unit of output produced. So, average cost is that got in by um, dividing total um, total cost um, here by quantity or you add your AFC by ABC. In this question, we are not given this, so we ignore this. We have to find TC. And we know that TC is the addition of fixed cost and variable cost. And if you look at the question closely, you notice that we are given the value for fixed cost and variable cost. So to get our total cost, we add this both, which is what I did here. You have your 1,5 and 
as your VC. And FC has five hundred. When you add, you get up to thousand. So we've got him on our TCs. So applying the value formula for average total cost, which is average cost and yield, is TC divided by quantity. You have your a TC divided by quantity. So TC, you got divided for TC as two thousand divided by the quantity of units produced, which was given to us as fifty. So two thousand divided by fifty, you get a forty. So the appropriate answer to this question is. Option C, it is 40. Then we come to the concept of utility. What is utility? Utility has to do with the amount of satisfaction a consumer derives from consuming a particular community at a particular time. Okay? So we have three concepts of um, utility. We have the total utility, which has to do with the total amount of utility or total amount of satisfaction gotten from consuming a given amount of community. And we have the average utility as the um, satisfaction per unit of community consumed. And we have the marginal, which refers to the additional satisfaction derived by consuming an extra unit of community. The formula for total utility is on average utility times quantity consumed, QC. And the formula for average utility is the average uh, total utility divided, divided by the quantity consumed. And the marginal utility is the change in total utility divided by change in quantity consumed. So here are some. Then we'll go to utility maximization. Utility maximization has to do with a situation whereby a consumer gets the best uh, from consuming a particular commodity given the level of income. Okay? Alright, so it is a concept that individuals are term sick to get the highest satisfaction from their economic decision. That is achieve, achieving the greatest amount of satisfaction from the limited resources available to him. It occurs when marginal utility of that community equals to the price. That is a situation by the marginal utility equals the price. You can see the MUX over the um, PX, the MUY over the PY, the MUZ over the PZ. Alright, so what is diminishing marginal utility? There's a law for it that it has to do with as more of a particular community is consumed, it will get to a point where the satisfaction will begin to diminish until there's no more satisfaction got. So um, diminished marginal utility holds that as additional units of a commodity are consumed, less and less satisfaction is added to utility and later adds nothing. That's why you see. You love a product, you use it for a while, or you use it at that moment and you get to a point that you're tired of it. So that is that point that we that refers to or relates to marginal and diminishing marginal utility. Then you have a theory of consumer behavior, which has to do with how consumer react, react or behave to change in price and change in the level of their income, given a, 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 a constraint of their budget or their income. So in 20, year 2020, we asked when MU equals P, the consumer A makes a loss, B maximizes utility, C minimizes utility, D is at equilibrium. So we recall that utility maximization is a situation by the marginal utility equals the price of that commodity. So of course, the appropriate answer is uh, uh, option B, which is maximize utility. So, Year 2019, we were asked to um, utility maximization occurs when one of the following conditions is attained. So we know that utility maximization has to do with when the uh, marginal utility of that community equals the price of that community. So from the option you have your MU equals change in T or change in QC as quantity consumed, B, MU, X over PUX equals MUY over PY. Or, and then option C, you have PX over UY equals PY over MUX. And we have D, MUX over PY equals PXY over MUXY. We know that um, it's a situation about your marginal utility of that community equals the price of that community. So the appropriate option, given that um, utility maximization is the point where the last bit of utility and that spent on that commodity equals the price 
Okay, so we have um, mux equals um, over px equals my over p1, and your the appropriate or the correct answer to this option is uh, to this question is the option p, which is your mux that is marginal utility of point x divided by price of x equals marginal utility of point y divided by price of y. Then um, in 2017, we are given a, a table of data. It said um, we have your quantity consumed from 0 to 5. We have your total activity from 0 to 0, 10, 15, 17, 18, 18. And your average utility. Then it said from the table, it can be inferred that A, diminishing marginal returns to scale. B, excess demand. C, diminishing marginal productivity. D, Diminishing marginal utility. All right, so let me explain these options. Diminishing marginal, diminishing return to scale is a condition in which, um, in production, in which the level of um, variable inputs and factors of production, as it's increasing, the level of, of, of output is decreasing. That's the diminishing return to scale. Then we have the excess demand. We are not concerned with that. Then we have the diminishing marginal productivity which is almost the same with the diminishing um, return to scale, but it's just more concerned about production. Then um, we have the diminishing marginal utility, which was stated earlier, which was explained earlier as um, um, the, addition, the additional unit of a commodity are consumed, the more the additional, the more the additional unit of a um, commodity are consumed, the less and less satisfaction it adds to utility, and later the total utility becomes zero. So here we notice that uh, it got to a point, the total utility was consuming 10, it increased to 15, then to 17, then to 18. Then you notice that the more you look at the average utility, it got to a point, it got to zero. It was not um, getting any more satisfaction from consuming that particular product. So it remained constant. Then after a while, it will begin to decline. In year 2016, in the theory of consumer behavior, you know the theory of consumer behavior studies how behavior, um, how consumer behaves or reacts to um, change in price as a result of um, the level of income at its disposal. Okay, the consumer is set to maximize, maximize utility when A, marginal utility of commodities equals the price of that commodity. Yes, B, marginal utility of commodity X is equal to the price of commodity Y. No. Average utility of commodity of, co of a commodity is equal to the price paid for it. Then the option D, total utility of a commodity is equal to the price paid for it. We know that marginal utility is um, attained where the, the marginal utility of that commodity equals to the price of that commodity. So given the um, the option, you know that the appropriate answer to the question is um, the option A, where you have a marginal utility of that commodity equal to the price of that commodity. Right, with this, we come to the end of the class. I uh, appreciate you for staying tuned to listen to the session, and I wish you all the best in your forthcoming exam.